This is Altamira. It's one of the most beautiful spots in all of northern Spain, a kind of natural park about 40 miles from the Pyrenees, just a few miles from the sea. But I'm here because of what's beneath my feet. What's beneath my feet? Deep in a cave is one of the true wonders of the world. The cave here at Altamira is particularly significant as it was the first site in the world containing Ice Age art ever to be discovered. By sheer coincidence, it's also one of the finest examples of cave art in existence, with the paintings here dating back 22,000 years. It was first brought to the world's attention in 1876, when it was discovered by a local archaeologist and his young daughter. The scientific community at the time was still struggling with the implications of Darwinism and could not accept that Ice Age man would have been capable of such skill. So for over 20 years after discovery, this stunning work was dismissed as a fake. This is what they discovered when they penetrated to the inner recesses of the cave. An extraordinary painted gallery of animal forms bison, wild horses, reindeer. It's been called the Sistine Chapel ceiling of cave art, but I don't think that does justice to Altamira because it certainly doesn't describe its effect because the Sistine Chapel is vastly high, very remote, whereas here you can almost reach up and touch the animals. It's a very low ceiling space. It's very intimate. It's almost as if you can touch the spirits of those animals, almost as if you can touch the spirits of the artists who created them. And the reason the images survived is because they're painted using soluble pigment on limestone. And what's happened is that over thousands and thousands of years, the pigment has actually become integral to the stone itself, almost like a, a form of cave fresco. It's fixed in the rock, and that's why they survive. It's amazing that they do. I think what's most extraordinary about Altamira, and it's quite hard to catch on camera, is the three-dimensionality of this work. This is not painting on a flat surface. It's nothing like painting on a canvas. Well, Leonardo da Vinci said that a great artist should look sometimes up at the sky or look at a wall and look at the shapes in a wall and find his compositions there. That's exactly what the cave artist did. Look here. See, there you've got a bison. And what the artist's seen is he's seen the muscle of the thigh of the bison in that protuberance of rock. And then he's seen the head there in another rock altogether. So it's as if the head is turning to face you. It's the art of imagination. It's the art of finding what you already know in a deep space, in a cave. I love this deer. Life-size, almost, this deer. It's just wonderful. What a piece of art. What a work of art. And look at the way in which another artist has found in the curve of limestone just beneath the deer's snout, space to make a wonderfully vigorous Picassoid bison. Completely different in its scale. The whole body of the bison is smaller than the head of the deer. There's this tremendous sense of animal life, fantastic naturalism. It's so hard to believe it was created so many thousands of years ago. Now what we're actually looking at here is in fact an immensely skillful replica of Altamira Cave. It duplicates 
every contour, every shape, every hollow, um, every image is exactly where it is in the original. So it is a tremendous, amazing piece of work and a very necessary piece of work too because they discovered that human breath creates an algae that has a corrosive attacking effect on these priceless, immensely precious, valuable relics of our own most distant past. Um, so the caves are now mostly closed up. They're considered too fragile for any human being to enter the space.